Padres fans, we're here to give you a 360 view and an all access pass to your San Diego Padres. Here's what we have on deck for today's show. We kick it off with one of the busiest times in Major League Baseball, the trade deadline. We recap what your Friars have done so far. Plus, we sit down for an exclusive interview with one of your newest Padres. And we take Phil Maton to explore his new city at one of San Diego's finest staples. All that and more now on this brand new episode of Padres POV, presented by Nissan. everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Padres POV. I'm your host Michelle Margo. This week has been a busy one full of trades so we decided to relax and catch a ball game at one of the league's best ballparks, our very own Petco. This has been home to some of the league's best and players love playing here at this beautiful ballpark which can make being traded difficult. We take a look at what trades your Friars have been busy with this week thus far. The Padres have decided to make a deal, and there is some promise for the future in return. Yeah, I think the deal has, you know, has components both of, you know, of, of present and future. It's an opportunity to see who rises up. The atmosphere's been good, the vibe's been good, the, the camaraderie's been good, and it's new opportunity for new people, and uh, that's what guys crave, they crave opportunity. Travis Wood is a guy that's gonna come you know, right now here and, 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 you know, and, and fill some different roles for us and has a chance to pitch um, you know, in some different spots for us the rest of the season. Consistent with the plan that we've been talking about, which is continue to build an organization that has a lot of quality and depth in terms of players that are gonna help us for the future. That's where we stand. It was not easy to make deals. It's, uh, you know, we're trading three guys that we know are going to help KC in, in the short and, and medium term. Um, but I think we feel like, you know, with Strom and Wood, um, you know, they help both, you know, both in the, in, in the near term here in San Diego and Ruiz for the future. Matt Strom, you know, left-hand pitcher, is a guy that we've targeted really for the last couple of years. He's a guy that uh, put himself on the map uh, over the course of the last few years. It's a live arm. It's a big arm that could potentially pitch in the rotation for us, could potentially pitch in the back of the bullpen for us. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about him for a long period of time, about what his upside is and what he could potentially be. And, uh, you know, he's realized some of that potential at the big league level. This year was a little bit more of a struggle for him, but uh, there's real stuff there. The young kid, S. Ray Ruiz, uh, our scouts love him. I'm sure AJ talked at length about him, and uh, you know he's a young kid with a lot of upside. Uh, he's a young second baseman, uh, prospect in the AZL, uh, who's had you know a really nice year last year in the DSL. And is off to a good start so far. You know it's a power speed combo guy that we think has a bright future. It's hard to find you know bad speed combo guys, guys that bring you know a few tools to the table, and, and guys that I think just in a short time he's been in pro baseball. Uh, he's hit, he's hit with some, you know, he's done some damage. Um, you know, I think believe it's 20 extra base hits in his first 20 games down in the AZL. Uh, and he's a guy for us that's, uh, that's an interesting, you know, prospect that we got in the deal. We're all excited to see what the future holds. Coming up, Phil Maton tells us why he carries a pink backpack out to the bullpen before every game. Plus, our own Mark Grant sits down with one of your newest friars, Dusty Coleman. Stay tuned. I think I bring a, a good work ethic. I work hard every day, and uh, as far as on the field, I think defensively I, I can play anywhere on the field. But first, it's time for your friar fun fact. This week in Padres history, on July 22, 2014, the Padres acquired fan favorite Gonjerva Salarte from the New York Yankees for third baseman Chase Headley. Salarte has a 274 batting average, 43 home runs, and 191 RBIs in his Padres career since joining the club.
Back here on Padres POV presented by Nissan, I'm Michelle Margot. Because of the busy week of the trade deadline, we decided to enjoy a ball game here at Petco Park, which is where Mud sat down with one of the newest members of the squad after being called up from AAA El Paso earlier this week. Meet Padres infielder Dusty Coleman during this exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. Take a look. Hey, welcome back to the big leagues. Dusty Coleman played at shortstop last night. How did it feel, Dusty? Oh, it felt great getting back out on the field, you know, getting to get in the starting lineup, kind of getting the flow of the game and being at this beautiful park. There's not much better than that. How do you separate the AAA El Paso ballpark, which, mind you, is a great ballpark, but then you find you're back here at a big league venue at Petco Park. How do you erase all that and just play the good old game of baseball? Yeah, for me, it always kind of, once I get that, that first ball at me and that first at bat, it kind of, all right, I'm just playing baseball again. But, you know, this park and El Paso are, are very nice, but this is definitely a, another step up. Dusty, be honest with me, a rude awakening back to the big leagues the last time with the Kansas City Royals in 2015. Now you have to face Jacob deGrom. <laughs> Welcome back to the big leagues. How'd you feel? Uh, I mean, I, I felt pretty comfortable up the plate, actually. Uh, you know, he's got great stuff. And he was commanding it last night really well, but hey, it's got to get easier from there. After facing DeGrom, it's going to be uh, fun the rest of the way. Looks like you had a fun time last night at shortstop. Who did you admire growing up in uh, South Dakota? I mean, and what, what was your favorite team growing up? Uh, I admired uh, Jeter, obviously. Just being as a shortstop, I felt his consistency was something to look up to. And then I grew up a Rockies fan, so once Tulo got up there, I was, a, I was a big fan of him and watching him play. So. Now, growing up, did you get a chance to go to a big league ball game? And if so, what was your first venue? And can you remember the game? Uh, my first venue was the Twins. That's actually the closest uh, closest team to where I grew up. Um, but I went to a lot of Rockies games. My uncle and my dad's family from out in Colorado. So he had season tickets from their first season. And every summer I'd get to take one of my buddies and we'd go to a series and kind of spend the time. So I fell in love out there. Dusty, what do you think one of your best attributes is? I know because play, you know, players, they evaluate what they can and can't do, and they know their limitations. But as far as Dusty Coleman is concerned, how would you scout yourself? What do you say you bring to the ballpark each and every day that's valuable? I think I bring a, a good work ethic. I work hard every day. And uh, as far as on the field, I think defensively, I, I can play anywhere on the field, and I feel comfortable doing it. So I think especially in the National League, uh, being versatile and being able to play short, second, third, wherever I have to, I think that's my biggest, my biggest asset. Now, I know that you're one heck of an athlete, and, and it gives it away because you're a big league shortstop. And usually the shortstop's the best athlete on the field besides the pitcher. We all know that, right? Oh, that. You played football. You played basketball up in South Dakota in Sioux Falls. You won a couple of championships on the gridiron. Tell us what position you played and what you did. Uh, football, I was quarterback and uh, cornerback. Uh, we, we did, yeah, we won my junior and senior year. We went undefeated and won state title. And, and then my senior year, we also won basketball, too, so it was fun. We were just, uh, we weren't a lot of basketball players. We were a bunch of football players playing basketball, but we worked hard and ended up winning it, so it was cool. Was uh, any other sports besides basketball or football, or was it just those three, baseball included? Uh, I played soccer a little bit once when I was little, but once football became available, my dad was a football player uh, in college, so I just, I jumped right into that and enjoyed it a lot, so. Besides Dusty Coleman, who's the most famous person from Sioux Falls, South Dakota? From Sioux Falls, probably uh, January Jones is up there. Yeah. yeah. Who say that again? January Jones. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I'm married though, so. <laughs> Who else? Um, I, Sioux Falls. Did you ever hear of a pitcher by the name of Terry Forster? I, I I have heard the name. I didn't know that he was from there though. Yes, he was born in Sioux Falls and went to Santana High School here in San Diego. And of course, uh, you're. Where did you go to college? I went to uh, Wichita State in uh, Kansas. Trevor Cahill actually has a tie to Sioux Falls, too. Did you know that? I did not know that. What's the tie? I think his mom's from there. So I think he goes back there in the offseason. We've talked about it before. And some great athletes from the great state of South Dakota, which the capital is Pierre. Pierre, yes. Not Pierre, it's Pierre. Yeah, so we learned something also in geography, uh, Pierre being the capital of South Dakota. And you went to Wichita State? Yes. <laughs> Shocker. Dusty, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Welcome back to the big leagues. Welcome to the big league squad, Dusty. Still to come, find out why Phil Maton's fastball is so effective. Plus, we take you through the best of the best from this past week in Padres baseball. Don't go away. And it's driven a long way to deep left field. Hunter Renfro, it's out of here. Up on top of the Western Metal Supply Company building again. But first, let's test your knowledge with some Padres POV trivia. In what round was Padres relief pitcher Phil Maton drafted? Is it A, second round, B, 12th round, or C, 20th round? We'll tell you right after this.
Welcome back to Padres POV presented by Nissan. Before the break, we asked you in what round pitcher Phil Maton was drafted. If you answered C, 20th, you're correct. Maton was selected in the 20th round of the 2015 amateur draft and became the first A.J. Preller draftee to make it to the big club when he made his major league debut on June 11th, 2017. San Diego sports fans, be sure to check out Fox Sports San Diego's newest show, Inside San Diego Sports, airing every Tuesday night after Padres Live, the postgame show. Coming up this week on Inside San Diego Sports, it's a look at San Diego's surf culture, including the world's largest women's surf contest and festival. You won't want to miss it. Yeah, this is huge. It's the biggest event for us in California, actually in the United States for the entire year. And if you really want to get a big push the second half, this is the time to do it. In case you miss it, you can always visit FoxSportsSanDiego.com for all the latest videos and articles. Recently, Andy Green and a couple of the guys visited Saquon Casino to enjoy a little brunch with some lucky fans. We've got Don Orsillo here and uh, manager Andy Green and a couple of the players to really uh, provide this exclusive experience for our players so that they can then ask questions of the Padre staff. And really, again, this is something that you can only get at Saquon. So it's something very unique that we're really proud to uh, put together for our, our players. Not only that you get to eat here at the Saquon Buffet, though, but of course you get to meet Andy Green in person. I like the way that he's very straight up and I mean, he's a really excellent manager. It's my second year doing this event. Just fun catching up with fans, and you don't always get the unfettered access when you're at the ballpark, so uh, this is a great venue for it. Well, it means a lot because it shows that the pod just cares about their fans, they're willing to go out to the community and talk to them, so it's a big thing. It's a good, a good experience to meet some of the players, the manager, and talk to them, see how they think about the team and the community. There's nothing better from a manager's seat than to give that gift to the fan base and to your players and to sit back and watch people enjoy what they've waited so long to enjoy. So that's what drives us, that's what motivates us, and that's what in the middle of this building process continues to push us forward to building something great for you all and for our organization. I had Andy Green sign this earlier, and I'm going to have Randy Jones, Miguel Diaz, and I have Tony Gwynn Jr. and uh, Brian Giles, all of the past players from Benito Santiago signed on, the, on my uh, frame here. And you're going to see down there in the minor leagues guys like Fernando Tatis Jr. and Cal Quantrill and Eric Lauer and Joey Lucchese. And you're going to see these guys start to migrate up the system, and you're going to go, that's what they're waiting on. That's what they believe in. And you'll see guys already right now show up like Phil Maton pitching in the back end of the bullpen and getting a save at the major league level as a guy who was recently drafted just a couple of years ago. Guys are working. These guys get out on the field earlier than anybody else. They work harder than anybody else. And inside that group, if they continue to do that, we're going to see better and better baseball players. We're going to see championship caliber baseball. And uh, at the end of the day, it's for the group of people that sit right here that have been waiting for it for so long. Go Padres, though. Time now to take an exclusive look at the best of the best from this past week in Padres baseball with your Plays of the Week. Check it out. Hunter Renfro, it's out of here. Up on top of the Western Metal Supply Company building again. Hunter Renfro on top of the building. Renfro hits this. Back at the wall and is gone. Hunter Renfro's second home run of the night. To third and Spangenberg going up to get it. Check out the vertical leap right here by Spangenberg. Then an 0-2. His line towards left center field. That's going to get down on the first major league hit for Dusty Coleman. And that'll go on the mantle. First big league knock. Kyle Lloyd, 26-year-old, making his major league debut. Swing and a miss, and the first strike got victim for Kyle Lloyd in the major leagues. In the air to right, and Renfro coming in, diving, and Hunter Renfro makes the catch in right field. Nice play by Renfro. Line to center field, in comes Mark. No, he slides, and he makes the catch in center. Lifted down the left field line, long run as Blash coming over into the slide, makes the catch from his hip pockets. Nice catch out there by Jabari Blash. Rivera diving as short as Cordoba picks himself up and throws out Rivera. 
Alan Cordoba. You gotta be kidding me. Drives one out towards right center field. That ball is headed back towards the wall, and it is gone. Dusty Coleman with his first Major League home run. A three-run shot gives the Padres a 7-1 lead. Strike three call. You can talk to the hand. Brad Hand with his second save in two nights as the Padres win it 7-5. It gets more and more fun to watch these guys play. Still to come, we officially welcome Phil Maton to America's finest city by taking him to one of our favorite San Diego staples. Stay with us. Oh, it was awesome. It was definitely uh, nice to get out of the stadium and go do something different for once. Welcome back to Padres POV presented by Nissan. We're coming to you from Petco Park while we relax and enjoy a ball game here in America's finest stadium. Well, there have been a lot of transactions in the past month or so regarding the Friars, but one that sticks out, Phil Maton's call up to the show. As we mentioned earlier, he was the first draftee in the AJ Preller era to make it up to the big league club and has impressed fans and the organization since. We wanted to show him around his new city, so we took him to a San Diego hotspot, Balboa Park. Take a look. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Doing awesome, thank you. Okay, so we want to welcome you to San Diego. This is a San Diego staple, Balboa Park. We're at the Museum of Man, and then we're going to climb the Balboa Tower, and then we'll get to know you a little bit. Sound good? Awesome, sounds good. Hi, Michelle. Hi, nice I'm Sarah. You. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Sarah. Welcome to the San Diego Museum of Man. First, I'm going to take you to our beerology exhibit, which is right over here. It's all about how beer and different cultures kind of connect. This is the longest word for beer. In Egypt, they drank beer for breakfast, actually. Who knew there was so much history? So we'll just go up the stairs. see the bright neon lights of living with the animals. You can actually open these guys over here and you can see how pets have changed over time. It's like squished his face yeah, even more. Yeah, that's really sad. <laughs> Do you have any dogs? Got a beagle at home. So can we check out the tower now? Of course, I'll take you on a tour. This is actually like one of the favorite among visitors. People love the tower. So looking this way, you can see the gorgeous park. Well, thank you so much for showing us around. And now we get to officially welcome Phil to San Diego. Well, welcome to San Diego. And I'm so happy you stopped by the Museum of Man. Thanks a lot for having us. So now I get to play 20 questions with you. All right, deal. All right, so Phil, what did you think of the Museum of Man? Oh, it was awesome. It was definitely uh, nice to get out of the stadium and go do something different for once. It was uh, really interesting, a lot of cool exhibits, a nice way to mix things up. What has been the biggest difference or adjustment from AAA to the big leagues? Just the amount of mistakes that get hit hard. In AAA, I got away with a lot of pitches that were in the zone that I didn't want to throw. But then up here, just can't get away with that. The hitters are way too good, and uh, they just don't miss mistakes. Everyone talks about your fastball and the spin rate. What makes it so effective, and how do you do it? Honestly, I just try to throw the ball as hard as I possibly can. Uh, this whole spin rate thing, it allows the ball to travel on the same plane longer, so it just allows me to pitch up in the zone a little bit more than other pitchers. And really, it's just a different look. I mean, that's really the only difference between my fastball and somebody else's. You always see the rookie guys in the bullpen carrying the pee pack pack out to the bullpen yep. before a game. What is that? And have you graduated from being the one who carries it yet? No, unfortunately, I still have the least <laughs> amount of service time. The, the pink bag is our snack bag. 
So uh, every day I make sure we have uh, enough drinks and enough snacks to get us through the baseball game. Is there any day that you don't for, like don't remember? Oh no, I remember. Eat? I remember every day. <laughs> It'll be the death of you if you I don't. Was gonna, I'm not going to take the consequences. Yeah. Forget. So who is Phil off the field? Do you have any off day activities you like? Whenever my golf clubs finally get here, I like to golf quite a bit. And then uh, I'll fish a little bit in the off season. But, you know, really my whole focus right now is just baseball. I mean, just doing what I can to stay here. Now, from what I remember, your first save ball you kept and you were going to give it to your dad? Yeah. I, uh, actually, every kind of step of the way I've gotten the baseball, first save in high A, first save in triple A, first save in the big leagues, and just kind of send those back home to my parents, and they have a big case of baseballs, and it's just kind of all my milestones that I've gotten throughout my career. Obviously, there's always a long journey for everyone to get to the major leagues. It's such a long process. Why did you stick with it? Honestly, it's just something, it's just I've always had a gut feeling that this is what I needed to do. You know, even going through college, you know, my junior year I didn't get drafted, and uh, you know, going into my senior year I felt like that was the fuel I needed to really improve my career and become a better pitcher so that I could, you know, push through, get drafted, and you know, have a shot at coming to the big leagues. Last question, what is your initial impression of the team? The team is obviously young and you're relatively young. What would you say? Oh, I mean, I, I really love this team. I mean, every day it's just an incredible amount of energy. You know, there's that just desire to play hard and to, you know, just go out there and see what we can do to win a baseball game. I mean, I absolutely love it. Awesome. Well, I know everyone's really excited to have you on the team and not just the fans, but our broadcast team at Fox Sports San Diego and all of Padre. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you very much. That's a wrap for this episode of Padres POV. I'm going to finish watching this ball game. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you next week for an all-new episode of Padres POV when we take a trip to the ballpark with Padres catcher Austin Hedges. From the beautiful Petco Park, I'm Michelle Margot. Cue the rollout. Yeah, yeah, hey. One that sticks out. <laughs> what? That made no sense whatsoever. <laughs> it's okay. I decided to, I have to redo this because my hair is in my mouth, sorry. It's opportunity to see who rises up.